What up, everybody, and welcome back to another episode of the Nerd Gem Report. I'm your host, Pablo, and joining me as always is Mr. Brian Schultz. Brian, a lot to discuss in both universes, right? And some other stuff as well. We'll, we'll throw those in there as well. But Brian, DC, a lot of news with nothing out. It's almost like Tesla. It's like, <laughs> you got, you know, it's nothing out. You haven't gotten all this talk about this and that and this and this and, and nothing yet. Well, with that right? analogy, I would say that one thing we'll talk about in particular is the equivalent of um, the Cybertruck, what was it, nine recalls in the first 12 months it's been out? I think we I think we have our cinematic equivalent of a recall. Oh my goodness. Let's get into it. Let's Ooh. start off, Brian, with Joker. Brian, I didn't quite know what to think about the movie when it was first announced. Then I started, you know, giving it a chance because Todd Phillips, you know, he knows what he's doing. And Joaquin Phoenix, he, he won an Oscar. Right? For this part. A, yeah, yes. For this part. And it made a billion dollars with a Highest 50. Highest grossing R-rated movie until Deadpool and Wolverine yes. broke it this summer. Yeah. How much did they pay for that? 50-something million dollars? Eight million dollar budget for $1.1 billion a box. That's what you call profit. And so with the announcement of the second one, because, you know, might as well make an extra few hundred million, right? Oh, so we thought that was the, that was the thought process, right? I get it. So Todd Phillips decided to go a different route with this. Brian, we had, had a discussion before where you mentioned that if this would have gone on this sort of platform, that perhaps maybe it could have had a second life on Broadway. But they wanted a movie. So he said, okay, he didn't want it, this movie, Brian, and, and, and you can tell he didn't want to do this movie, Brian. But when you want to do your own movies, you take the paycheck, right? And so you got Joker 2 releases. I didn't even know, Brian, when this movie was released. I, don't even, I wasn't even thinking about it, really. It releases, and then everybody's talking about how horrible this movie is. And then the, the, the spoiler at the end, Brian, which we'll talk about a little bit later. Brian, you saw the movie. I didn't see the movie. I didn't want to see the movie. I barely saw the first one. What did you think? And are the criticisms and how this movie was received and created from the perspective of Todd Phillips, does it make sense that this movie is sort of being reviled? I think it makes perfect sense the movie is being reviled. I still think this will go down as one of the most shocking box office busts in the history of cinema. I don't think that's an overstatement. When you're the highest grossing R-rated movie of all time and your follow-up might not outbox Morbius, I mean, you making the Marvels and Aquaman Lost Kingdom look like downright heroes. Yeah. And that's, I mean, at the start of the year, I think we would have said, look, we're only getting one Marvel movie and one DC movie, but they're both going to make money. We could just, we don't have to, we can sleep at night. Deadpool and Wolverine, regardless of how good it is, Hugh Jackman, Ryan Reynolds, they're going to make money. You know, yeah. Joker 2, Divisive, however way you felt about the first one, got 1.1 billion. Even if it falls off, 700 million, 650, we, we, got, we got money in the bank with that. This movie's going to lose money. It's going to lose money <laughs> and not a small amount. That is a failure of biblical proportions. <laughs> the joke is on you, indeed. <laughs> but here's the thing. Maybe we should have known better in retrospect. Because Todd Phillips, interesting filmmaker. He's got 
he's got some all-star to Hall of Fame entries, right? He's, you know, he's got a little, little old school. He's got a yeah. hangover one. You know, got yeah. Joker one. But the lesson from the hangover trilogy was when that guy doesn't really want to be there, he makes it so you don't want to be there either. Exactly. And that's how this movie felt to me. I felt Todd Phillips' personal misery all two hours and 15 minutes of this film. And I think he didn't want to do it. I really don't think he wanted to do it. But they just wouldn't leave him alone. And the money got to the point where he said, fine. I hate this. Yeah. So I'm going to make everyone else feel my pain when i make this and because he had been so successful he clearly between him and joaquin they had complete control because there's no way we talk about studios meddling there is no way this movie would have made to the screen as it was presented had there been warner executives doing their historical thing for on this movie they let those two cook, and they done fried this thing, and it's done. Like, this all talk about, like, we, oh, we said what we wanted to say in two movies, no Joker 3. Indeed. <laughs> Indeed. They put an exclamation point on that with this. But it's I, like, I mean, even it's if the executives, like, yeah. even if the executives go in there, like, Todd Phillips would say, yo, I made a billion dollars. What did you do? Exactly. I mean, you know? There's no comeback to that. They had control. And he's like, you begged me. I didn't call you. You begged me. So this is going to go down the way we want it to go down, meaning him and Joaquin. And Joaquin said, I think, I think what he said at one point was like, the idea for this movie came to him in a dream. Also probably a bad sign if you were following Joaquin Phoenix's dreams to, to fruition. But... It's just, you know, I always found Joker 1 to be a, it's like a work of art that's really difficult to enjoy. That's always how I described it. It's like you respect the craft, but you didn't enjoy the ride. That's always how I think about it. This felt like, it, it felt like torture in a lot of ways. And, and it kind of was. Like there's some really disturbing stuff in this movie. And it's not like the movie looks cheap, like in fairness. Like, it's not like this is a movie that has budget and obviously paid for some stars. The trailer looked interesting. I wouldn't say that Joaquin mailed it in. Like, it's not yeah. a no show. It's just what they attempted to do wasn't any fun and never seemed like it was intended to be fun. Yeah. Right up until the very end, when they make one of the most bizarre pivots as if they're part of the DC universe or some other universe that they clearly were never meant to be. It just, it was one of those, like I sat there and I was, I heard the ending. I had heard the ending was strange before I saw it. And then I saw it and I was like, that's almost offensive. Like I feel offended that you did that. But I've also felt angry kind of over the course of this movie already. So yeah, I'm not surprised. Cinema score D by the way, D Pablo, that's almost unheard of. <laughs> I don't think I've ever seen an F. I believe that's the, the crow. First. What was the crow? I believe the crow was either a D plus or a C minus. This is the, I, I'm pretty sure this is the lowest rated audience score for a superhero movie of all time. Wow. Now they probably didn't have that for like quest for peace and stuff like that. But in the modern era, this is it. This is the most hated movie in the genre yes. by audiences. Get the Razzies ready. He's next to your Oscars. Brian, what did you... So, okay, let's, let's get into the executives in the boardroom on Monday after hearing the horrific news. What is Zaslav thinking about in terms of yet, a, yet another... Yeah. Disaster. No, you got it. That's the right phrase. I mean, I don't know what the, I mean, these guys are colder than Mr. Freeze. I don't even know what, like, what, what else is there to say? I mean, run down the list. It's not just that they're missing. They're missing. Big. Badly. Badly. That's the thing, With right? Big names, too. That's the thing. 
it's like, you know, we, we talk about middling box office sometimes with these projects, but I mean, the flash again, like they were tracking on the flash. The opening weekend was going to be 150. It barely did a hundred total. The opening tracking on this movie was 110 to 130. It's not going to do 70 total. After word got out. Black Adam was supposed to be the culmination. That lost <laughs> over $100 million. Like Aquaman 2 went from a billion one to like 450 or 500. Like and Blue Beetle did that, did came that make money? Yeah, yeah, Blue Beetle. No, it, it didn't. What, what, it, yeah, well, it didn't. And by the way, that's that's officially it. But like, this we'll talk is... About that. We'll talk about Blue Beetle later. Yeah, I mean, honestly, like, it's basically been the Batman. That's the old, and like he inherited that movie. The Zaslav regime did not greenlight that movie. They don't have a win. And if you're looking for, in my mind, if you're looking for the biggest argument why, why Superman is going to fail, it's that everything these guys have touched has failed and failed spectacularly on the big screen. Yeah, yeah. I mean, Listen, we can we can absolutely one hundred percent sure that we can't trust Zaslov and what his opinions are on these movies. That's for certain. That's a fact, right? And we can't pretty much trust what anybody says over there now. You know, I don't like I said, I don't totally, I don't totally blame him on this particular one, just because I think we can tell it it wasn't his opinion that mattered. The only yeah. thing that his only role. He was like the owner of the sports team that's like, I'm making the trade no matter how many first round picks I have to give up. He was getting Todd Phillips to do and Joaquin to do the sequel no matter what it cost them. And once that yeah. happened, there were no test screenings. I don't get the impression that wow. it was ever shown to the executives. It was completely in the hands of Phillips and Phoenix. Wow. That's it. But I think if you're David Zaslav, it's not a bad percentage bet to say, worst case, I'm getting out of here with a money-making movie and an awards nomination for Joaquin. Worst case. And it's going to turn out. I would out say worst case. Award, yeah. Worst, whether he wins it or not, I don't know. But worst case, Brian, I was thinking, even if it is, I was thinking this movie is definitely not making a billion. I didn't think it was going to do this. As you and me. Sorry, that was my bad. Missed. That was a, yeah. Nobody, nobody thought it was gonna do this. Mm -hmm. No. No. Like a few hundred million dollar profit, you know, add a little extra padding to those that you know what I'm saying. Yeah. But sheesh. James Gunn, by mm -hmm. the way, he is running away from this. I don't know if you see the public comments where he's like. He basically is like, they asked him about it. He's like, no, I had nothing to do with it. Not part of the DCU. <laughs> that was his response. Not even part of Elseworlds. Nope. He's not even owning that. He's like, that's other worlds. He's like, that's <laughs> strange new worlds. He's like, yeah. I... <laughs> wow. He's not even on the Elseworld, yo. This, the first one was the Elseworld because that's what he was talking about. As long as these two guys were making them money, we celebrate them. We call it Elseworlds. But now, now that that's, that has gone down in flames, it's just one me. That's it. That's all it is. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> what you're talking about. There are twists, and then there are twists gone wrong, right? We've seen it with like M. Night Shyamalan through the years, right? This movie makes a choice. I'm going to spoil it. It's fine. You guys aren't going to see the movie if you haven't already. Um, we, we find out at the end of the movie that Joaquin Phoenix is not the Joker. And Todd Phillips is now out on the PR circuit going out of his way to tell you, well, I named the movie Joker, not the Joker. The so Joker. You should have known <laughs> this guy is an archetype and an inspiration for the character you know and love, but he's got nothing to do with that character. Well, Come to find out that's not totally true. So apparently at the end of Joker 1, they wanted Arthur Fleck to start carving his own mouth to mimic 
Heath Ledger's Joker. And Christopher Nolan blocked it and said no. So they kind of end around that in the sequel. Because, spoiler alert, Arthur Fleck is killed at the end of this movie. He's stabbed to death by a visiting inmate. Said inmate then starts to do the ledger joker smile carving whatever and you're left with this final vision of oh aha i got you this wasn't the joker all along and this guy now inspired by arthur fleck is maybe some sort of predecessor or is going to be what heath ledger became in the dark knight I just, I just felt insulted, Pablo. I felt offended that they did that, and I completely these, applaud these. Nolan for block. I completely applaud Nolan for blocking it in the first one, and I'm sad it wasn't blocked in this one. Do you think, if you're Nolan, if you're Nolan, I would assume you'd be, you know. Not necessarily happy with that choice of going that route with that, right? Yeah. Would you be, if you were Nolan, would you be upset with, not upset, but like, like, is there well, some tension that. now between them? I wonder. That's an interesting question. I don't know. I mean, I would say part of the reason Nolan blocked it is to be protective of Heath Ledger, the actor's legacy. Like, why, why, why connect that to this? And I think that's part of what he was suggesting. Yeah. But I think creatively, it makes no sense. It makes no, no sense not. at all. Like, this whole enterprise of Joker and Joker 2, everything about it is meant to stand apart. Why are you trying to connect it to anything? Yeah. What, what are you hoping to accomplish? And by the way... I thought one of the things that was brilliant about the Ledger Joker in the Dark Knight is that he has no backstory. They go out of their way to tell you, we know nothing about this guy, right? His clothes, we know nothing about yeah. his clothes, his weapons, his background. And everything he tells you about his life is a lie, which I think yeah. is brilliant. <laughs> Why are you trying to give him a backstory yeah. that he didn't ask mm. for, right? Like, yeah, it, it just that's what I mean by it has the feel of like, I want to... I want to put one over on this audience to kind of make them feel like the joke has been on them, pun intended, for these two movies, that they've been watching this guy thinking it was my take on the Joker, when in yeah. fact, there is the real Joker. He's out there. He's in this world. And you're going to meet him at the very end of these two movies and find out that the character you spent all this time with was basically just like the prelude to that. But I would say he, I'm sure the intention of the second film wasn't even to do that, but since they gave him this, they forced this on him, right? He decided well, to. It feels to like go, a middle go. finger to somebody. It feels like a middle finger to somebody, right? To the studio, to the universe. Like, I mean, you could spin it as like, oh, you, you made me Elseworlds. You don't want to include me in your universe? Fine. I'm going to force something that ties me back to your universe. And, you know, I, you could spin it any way you want, none of which is positive. I mean, the rumored they shot three or four endings to this, the one that's leaked that actually probably would have made the most sense would have been to have Lady Gaga kill him on the same staircase where he danced in the first movie. That was yeah. shot. You can find it on YouTube. There's a oh, shot okay. of her. She kills him. She stings. She surrenders. And she basically assumes the mantle. In, in the context of this, that probably made the most sense. And I'm kind of perplexed why they didn't do that, which leads me but, to the, was he trying to piss off as many people as possible? With he wanted this to be end? done. And, because, I'm, again, you're being paid all this money to do something you don't want to do. And I get the, 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 the dissatisfaction and the creativity just not being there and just doing something. I mean, the movie of, still has craft, though. I wouldn't say, that's what I'm saying. Like, it's not like, it doesn't, it's not like the the production crew didn't show up. It still yeah. has a look. Um, it's just, yeah, it's just more that the two guys running, steering the ship don't feel like they want to be there, right? So like even yeah. in the musical yeah. numbers, 
it's like there's pomp and circumstance, but like having heard Joaquin do Johnny Cash, and then yeah. you hear him in this, and you're like, did he even rehearse this? And then it's like, <laughs> and then it's like you have you have Lady Gaga, <laughs> right? And then you have like you have Lady Gaga. It's like okay, she has one of the, you know, most brazen, full voices yeah. around, and you kind of have her whispering, and it's sort of like, what? Well, why do you, why is she here? Like if you're not going to actually let her exercise one of her greatest talents, which led me to like, that's my point of like, had this been an actual musical, an actual thing on Broadway, would we have liked it more? Because then they probably would have sang to the, the top of their yeah, potential. Yeah, and that, you yeah, know what I mean? Yeah, I, yeah, yeah, yeah. So it just, yeah, I think the movie is, I think the movie is getting what it deserved. I'm very surprised that audiences deciphered this as fast as they did. Even yeah. movies this bad, usually that first day for something like this would have been like a massive people came out. But word got out on this that it was terrible and people didn't even show up. Brian, let me ask you this. For their careers moving forward, Brian, you've had a couple of instances with Joaquin Phoenix not really uh, going the extra mile in Napoleon, right? And now you get well, this is, and then he did he 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 ruined that other movie that he was behind that he didn't show up for. That just happened too. That and now, will this affect Todd Phillips? I'm sure he got a lot of money. He can put together a movie, and it'll be dope if people watch it. But does it affect his working relationship with like execs and you know and studios? I guess no. I just think I, so for Phillips. I think he's fine. Like I said, yeah. I mean, this is not a one hit wonder, right? When you have the types of movies on his resume that he does, what it tells you though, do not hire Todd Phillips to do a sequel. Do not, right? When you look at what I, happened in the Hangover trilogy, how bad it got, and then you look at this, like take him for his original idea. Like he hire, hire him, him to do his, what he wants to do. And then, and then once it's done, shake his hand, say thank you. And find don't, somebody and, else to take over. And burn his, and take his number out of your phone. <laughs> Joaquin, like I, I can't tell because I mean, let's be honest. Like this guy has been one of the more unpredictable personalities in Hollywood for a long time. The idea that like we should be shocked by his behavior, come on! Like he's he's kind of been he's every bit as eccentric as he is brilliant, and sometimes that just goes over the line. Yeah. Um. So I don't actually think it affects him that much. It's just like you know what you're getting, kind of. Yeah. Right? If you sign if you sign him up to be the star, you better be prepared for anything. Yeah. And I kind of feel like Gaga will walk out of this unscathed. She just made an album; should be good. Yeah, so she is releasing an album with this movie. That that probably hopefully will do better than than the film. But like, the songs are dope. Yeah. But I think that I think the I think the way this is going to fall out is Phillips and Phoenix will take the brunt of the criticism, followed by the studio. Gaga will be seen as the like. Okay, she showed up and didn't get to do the thing that she probably thought she was going to do, and life goes on. This is surprising. Like I thought that was the whole point, like bringing yeah. her on for a mu this musical. I thought that we were going to hear, you know, this. And we did. Know? I mean, there's like six musical numbers in this. There's a whole parallel. I mean, this is a the part of the movie that's in Arthur Fleck's head is the musical. That's his happy Got place it. with Harley Quinn. The part in the real world is the courtroom drama. Um, and those kind of collide. That so there, there's a lot of music but, in this. But, but does they she just, sing? Yeah, but it's kind of like a, it's kind of like a whispering, half spoken word, half singing. He's not, Got it. and that's what I'm saying. Like Gaga's not belting out shallow. Like she's not. Gotcha, gotcha. Wow. Yeah, she's kind of like. A shame. Why, it, why not you? Yeah, that's wow, what I'm saying. It's crazy. Yeah, it's a weird creative de decision. Again, it has yeah. that feel of like, aha, we fooled you. We, you, we have Lady Gaga. You thought she was going to really sing, and she kind of going to whisper instead. Like, you know, yeah, yeah, yeah. Let us know in the comment section below what you guys think of the fallout of the Joker too. Yeah, so because... I would give it. I mean, it it's I'll give it like half a star, maybe tops. It's not a one. It's not up to a one. Like I said, it, it didn't look sloppy production wise. That's why I wouldn't give it a zero. But gotcha, like, gotcha. There's nothing redeeming about this movie, and there's no, your life is better for not having seen it. So I gotta, I gotta. Have you listened to John Campia's, um 
thoughts? I, no, I saw it. It came up on my feed. I didn't watch it. He's out of the. Did he like it? I don't know. Oh. I'm trying to find out if he did. I, that's the thing. I want to know. So one out of every three <laughs> critics like this movie. I want to know what they liked. Like, like, because this. I mean, I don't want to drone on. I mean, this movie has like a graphic sexual assault. This movie has a brutal beating in it. This movie has like kind of stuff where you're just like, I don't want to see this in any movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, it's like I haven't. I was like stuff where I'm like. Last time I saw stuff like this was like American History X. Like that wasn't that wasn't enjoyable. Like you know, it's like where's the fun? I mean, it is still a Joker movie, right? So I don't know. I was just thinking about something regarding Batman in in in, in the in the universe, but we'll 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 move. Let's move. Oh, that on. was the other thing. Like why, you know, it's a courtroom. The courtroom drama. They have Harvey Dent trying the case, and they. Spoiler alert, they blow up the courthouse and you can guess what happens to Harvey Dent in that explosion. And it's like, why? Again, you, you're trying to be completely apart. Why are you like Easter egging me in the final act <laughs> with something that I know is not going anywhere? <laughs> oh, man. Yeah, so let us know in the comment section below what you guys think. Um... <laughs> Next up, speaking of Batman, <laughs> Zaslav wants more Batman, although I don't know what that really means coming from him, right? Like more Batman, what do you mean? What, what do we have that you want more of? The, the original Batman with, with, with Pattinson, that's what you want? Because we already know that's what we're getting, but how soon do you want Batman? Right? Is it that he wants Brave and the Bold Batman? Adam Richardson? I mean, what else? Zaslav wanting more Batman. What does this mean, Brian? What is he telling James Gunn to do? What does he do? Matt Reeves do? What does he want? So the article that talks about this is is pretty interesting. You know, I, I read this headline and I started to read the content and it I think it refers to one thing in particular, but it it does go to show you like when you have when you have a strong CEO personality who I don't question that David Zaslav's a fan, although he said he's a Superman fan more than he's a Batman fan, but but someone who doesn't necessarily have the understanding of the storytelling of how to get there. Yeah. This is what you can get, I think, sometimes, which is, look, he's losing patience. Look, we just went through the box office bombs. I get it, right? The stock's been annihilated. We talked about it. The debt load is really high. The company's in trouble. Yeah. Is it going to be sold? Is it going to be broken up? Like, you know, all these discussions. Yeah. He wants DCU back. I want to be like, that's clearly to me what he's saying, right? Because if you said he just wants more Batman of any kind, well, hang on a minute. You had Michael Keaton in the Flash movie. You have Pattinson in that world. You scrapped Batgirl, which had Keaton in it. You threw away Cape Crusader in animated form. So don't tell me like you didn't have other Bat. You had Batman of some kind. So what you want is you want DCU Batman. Raven the Bull, Batman. But what the article indicates, he is pushing Gunn to introduce that Batman before they make Brave and the Bull. He just wants that actor and character on the board as fast as possible. So much so that the article says they have considered, although it's not, doesn't sound like it's going to happen, they're going to that they would retcon the Reeves Batman as the DCU Batman, which I think would be a kind of a mistake at this point. But oh yeah. That that's been discussed, that they would like somehow make it so Pattinson was now their Batman because he's already under contract and wearing the suit. This starts to, Brian, in my view, starts to forfeit the words James Gunn spoke of when he referred to these films. Bingo. Right, it was. Because, we won't greenlight anything until we have a script we're happy with. It's a writers-driven process. You just made it a CEO-driven process, which I get it. It's a business, but like, yeah. 
Here's the other thing. You can't make patents in the DCU Batman if you intend to make Brave and the Bold. You can't. A 20-something Bruce Wayne is not the character. It doesn't work. You can't put that character with a psychotic Damian Wayne. It does, so if you're going to do that, Brave and the Bold is gone. Well, I'm just saying, if you do, if you do that, Brave and the Bold is gone, right? That yeah. project is canceled. You're starting yeah. over with something else. Yeah. Yeah. Which I'm guessing is why the Pattinson idea sounds like it's not going to happen. I'm guessing Gunn threw himself in front of that and was like, you, I, we can't. We just can't do that. We need an older Bruce Wayne to go with this younger Damian Wayne. But the question now is Zazel's basically being like, you got to put him in a credit scene. So is, does that mean, which I interpret to mean, Batman's in the credit scene for Superman, right? Isn't that the, isn't that the obvious takeaway from that? If he's saying he has to show up earlier, where else is he going to show up? They ain't going to debut him on some HBO Max Gotham series. That's not happening. He's debuting yeah. in a movie, and it would have to be Superman, I which is kind of like, why? Cutscene. I don't want to see him in a cutscene either. either. It's like, you, you know what? That happened. That would just, it, wouldn't that be like taking steps toward Donna Justice all over again? It's like, is Superman just not allowed to fly? <laughs> <laughs> Why like, can't really? we have a Superman trilogy? Why can't and then have these other movies happening around it? Why can't we do that? What we have here is a rare opportunity for me to cut loose. Because the thing is, once Bat once Superman has other dudes around him, he is useless after that. He's the first guy out of the fight every time. <laughs> Cause you gotta take him out. <laughs> he gotta be the first one to go. <laughs> Cause it's like for what? Oh my God, man! Hey, you'll make everybody happy if you introduce Alan Richardson as Batman, and 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 what's the guy's name? Um, Timothy Chalamet as Robin or as Damian Wayne. Yeah. You don't have to put yeah. that movie out right away. By the way, if you just announce, oh, you got to that, and you have a big Allah Mahershala Ali. Just announce it. <laughs> don't have no plan. No, but like, if this is Gunn, like, I think Gunn would write it. I think that's a movie he could write. And then if you announce the real director, sorry, Andy Muschietti, I don't think he's getting the gig. If you put nope. a bigger name director in that scene and say, this is our team, people will wait for that movie and be excited. I think it'd be more yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. Like, you don't need to cameo Batman at the end of Superman, you know, next year. Oh, to be like, oh we, Look at our guy. Look at our guy. We got to come. And the thing is, the article says he's desperate for this because he wants to compete with Marvel. Compete with Marvel? Maybe you shouldn't <laughs> worry about competing with Marvel right now. Marvel got plenty of problems. Like, let them, but hey, let them stew in that. But that's fine because he's recognizing it for what it is, Brian. And it has always been a competition. I don't care what nobody oh, That's said. fine. That's fine. That's fine. I get that. You know, that's, you know, yeah, of course. It's WWF and WCW for sure. Yeah, but. yo. This is Eric Bischoff, Vince McMahon. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> <laughs> There's supposedly a really good McMahon documentary on I saw Netflix it. right now. I haven't watched it yet, but I've heard that's Watch really good. It. It's, so, yeah. it's very interesting. It's very so. interesting. So um but yeah, you announced that adoration. Timothy Chalamet as Damian Wayne. And there's all you gotta do is just sit there and wait and just make sure that it's happening and doesn't sit like Mahershala Ali's Blake. You know what I'm yeah. saying? That is actually gonna happen. Cause that would just that would get everybody excited. But I mean the other yeah, and the other thing too is if you're if you're you speculated on said on the other day, and I think it's now this would also feed into that. If you need more Batman to tide you over, kick Matt Reeves in the ass and say, "Dude, get, we're, make make my other two movies." Yeah, back to back. Yeah, and be like, done. Like get those go off this, yeah, get those movies down to two hours and fifteen minutes each. Give them to me like one year apart, and we got a trilogy, and that tides you over. Like that's all you need. That first one made eight hundred million. Like. But why are we waiting you, six it, years for the next one? It's like, come on, man. So to to then be hopefully not disappointed, but there are gonna be expectations higher than you would probably think, you know, because there are little things that people wanna see. It's for us is a Bruce Wayne. And I feel yeah. Bruce Wayne in this, you know. So that's I mean it's like you had I, I just want to say when I hear Zaslaw say that, I'm kinda like 
you had a path to that, right? You could have just pushed Reeves a little harder to be like, hey, you know, I love your ideas for the TV shows, but like, let's make sure we get Batman 2 done. Let's make sure we get that, you know, and like we talked about it with Penguin, like they've kind of missed the connectivity a little bit there. And then they wouldn't have this problem of like, hey, yeah. feeling like they have a Batman void. Um, but hey, you know, they, they, they allowed Phillips to do his thing. They're allowing Reeves to do his thing. It's a choice, right? I mean, and, and you got to live and die by the consequences of that. I saw the other day, actually today, where we're taping today, I, we were talking about Christopher Nolan the other day. We got that little short up talking about his process. Yeah, yeah. July, July 20th, 2026, he announced it. He's ready to go with Matt Damon as his lead. Next movie at Universal. Three years to the weekend to Oppenheimer. I would assume that James Gunn perhaps already has his Batman in mind, and he doesn't. He just doesn't want to announce certain things without getting to Superman first, because he's the focus right now. So, I think it would be a mistake to make an announcement to you know. I would tell Zaslav, chill, let Superman come out first, because that's you like Superman, right? So let him let him do his thing. And I know you want that money too, but once we get Superman going, yeah. Batman could be around the corner. When we announce that separately after Superman is done, we can't introduce no Batman at the end of Superman because then that takes all the attention. Because Batman, you mentioned Batman in a Superman movie. That's it. Bat forget about it. People are going to be thinking about Batman. If you mention what? Batman in the first 10 minutes, forget about it. Your movie is over. Yeah, I agree. I agree. I agree. Now, the so part of it I can sort of sympathize with Zaslav is some of the stuff that we talked about where it's like, we're hearing all these other rumored DC projects. And I could see Zaslav being like, James, James, I love your imagination, but we need Batman and we need Superman. And like, yeah. let's get those right. And then I'll let you do anything you want with the other ones. <laughs> that part I could get with. I can, I can see Zaslav like, yo, Plastic Man, yo. Sergeant Rock. And now I gotta hear this dude calling me about this. In Come on, man. Give me Batman. <laughs> Not this other stuff. Uh, like, you lucky I'm letting you get away with Creature Commandos. You're already pushing the needle right there. And then he did this you, dynamic duo Robins animated movie that kind of came out of nowhere. They, that's it, official. That's happening. What is it again? It's Dick Grayson and Jason Todd in uh, the, the two Robins animated film. Or it's like part animated, part stop motion. I, I don't know anyone who asked for that. I was like, yo, but see, this is the thing that we've been worried about with James, you know? Yeah, the editing. It's like, yeah. he, he's like yo, chill, you know, too many ideas. And if you, listen, it's fine to have too many ideas. I have a lot of ideas, but we can't be announcing them to, because what, what's the focus? What's the focus? Why haven't we had a Superman trailer? Well, what is your maybe, plan? Maybe then? it's a win that it was not attached to Joker, though. Well, we probably oh, yeah, should, we should yeah, probably call should. that a, they avoided a detonation by not putting it on. They probably that. knew because they probably knew. I'm pretty sure James Gunn knew about because we, Brian, we're not the first one to get. I'm pretty sure they know. Well, I think in retrospect, after I thought about it, I think the reason he wouldn't do it is because, as he said, it's not part of the DCU. It would be yeah, confusing yeah. to put my lead DCU film trailer oh, yeah, 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 yeah. in Elseworlds. He wouldn't do it. That's why he wouldn't do it. Yeah. Uh, yeah also, yeah. R-rated movie. You want it. Superman's more family yeah, friendly. Yeah, like, yeah, you know, yeah, you, you wouldn't yeah, do that. Yeah. But, but like, the thing that worries me with what we've been talking about is resources are limited here. That's the thing, right? Like, yeah, it's not like they've got all this cash lying around to fund a hundred million here, fifty million there, two hundred million there, like. You have to be judicious in where you put your dollars, especially now when Joker, a movie they would have just said, hey, we got a couple hundred million in cash is going to come in our coffers. That's not going to happen now. Yeah. They have to have hits. Yeah. Brian, Superman is in the can. So was Black Adam when they made the announcement about the future. The new hierarchy. They had their plan. This is sounding very similar, man. In that you're announcing all these other things. Yeah, we haven't heard a peep about, about this movie. We, we have our high hopes for this movie because we have someone there that has a plan and has done great work 
and has done great things. But this is a this is a feat to and not to say this is Brian. I'm pretty I mean, would you say, Brian, that people are sort of uh I mean Christopher Reeves Superman, that movie, the Superman the movie, is it up there? Is it gonna be a bar that people want this movie to reach and surpass? Or how do you think people are looking about uh, 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 on this movie coming out? That's an interesting question. I think the comparisons are inevitable. Um, I don't think people need it to be that, though. I, mm -hmm. I don't. Um, because as great as that movie is, I think it leaves room for... It. I think that's more of a Corrin Sweat thing than a movie thing. I don't know if I'm wrong about that. Maybe people will disagree with me. I think David Corrin Sweat faces the comparison directly to Christopher Reeve himself. Mm -hmm. Then I think this movie faces the comparison to everything that Superman the movie was. Mm -hmm. Because as, as great as the, prof as the movie is remembered, there, there's definitely things in it where you watch it now and you're like, oh yeah, there's room for modernization, right? Like, oh, yeah, like yeah. I, to me, like, I don't think Nicholas Holt is going to be held to any Gene Hackman standard. He's going to deliver, I think, a more serious performance. I think that's an opportunity where he can be the best live action Lex Luthor we've seen. Yes. And that can really help this movie. I think Rachel Brosnahan can be the best live action oh, Lois Lane. Lane yeah. And yeah. that can help this movie. And I think there's things that Superman can borrow from the essence of the way Reeve played the character but then deliver it in a way that has, you know, whether it's through the action or whether it's through the set pieces that is, you know, more modern and more spectacular in some ways than even mm -hmm. what, what that looked like back then. Again, mm -hmm. movies being shot in IMAX largely. So that's scale wise, I think offers opportunity visually to do some things. Mm -hmm. So no, I think it's more corn sweat. I think it's him that people will just, do you see Christopher Reeve? And I gotta be, look, I gotta be honest. Don't dismiss Henry Cavill from that conversation. This is the moment where like, there's a oh, lot yeah. of people who like the visual, the physical of what he yeah. had, the presence of what he brought. Even if we can talk about the yelling and the lack of dialogue or whatever, he is a factor in this discussion. For a lot of people, he is the Superman they think of. Yeah, yeah. And so I, I think Corrin Sweat will face that comparison. But I think well. that's just visually. I don't think that's anything else. I, I think visually. that's fair. But I think if you, to a, a generation of people, Henry Cavill is Superman. They didn't grow yeah, up with yeah, Christopher yeah, certainly, Reeve, certainly, right? Certainly, and like Brandon Routh wasn't Superman long enough for it to matter. So I think Corrin Sweat faces a tall order to look and embody the character more so than the rest of the cast. But yeah. But I think people yeah, that, are ready, though. I will say this. I think people are ready for a rock and roll fun time at a Superman movie. I really do. Like, I think, if, I think if this has, like, a Top Gun Maverick type of vibe to it, I don't mean the movie. I'm just saying that feel yeah. of, like, positivity that that movie yeah. engendered. I think this movie will do really well. Yeah. Yeah, let us know um, what you guys think of... Uh, I know this turned into a Superman discussion, but... Uh, what you think of Zaslav wanting more Batman? And what do you think about the prospects of Superman? What are we going to be, uh, how, what are you comparing this to? Are you looking for that nostalgic feeling that way? Because every, every time I watch the first Christopher Reeve Superman, it's like, it's, I got to sit there and watch this. It has, it, the way they set every moment up with the music, it's just, everything is just perfect about those moments. So yeah, let us know what you guys think in the comment section below. Let's transition over to the penguin. Brian, you haven't seen the the latest episode, right? No, yeah, I'm through three episodes, I guess it is. Yeah. I keep seeing headlines. Penguin, perhaps the best comic book movie, perhaps the best series, period. Forget about comic book movie. Yeah. The best series, Brian. I find it hard to believe, Brian, that when it comes Emmy time that they don't sweep almost every category, Brian. Ooh, okay. That's 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 a bold claim. Okay. This Brian, this show is 
top notch from all angles, Brian. I would agree. And the way they transition the Batman and this show, you feel like this is a continuation of of that. Although I have my gripes, but but you go ahead and talk. I had one in that category. I think I texted you when it happened. I kind of was like, oh, I had my first scene in this show where I kind of was like, uh, I didn't love the execution. Uh But I really, I I said, I haven't done the latest episode, but I'm really enjoying the characters. Um, Farrell is on one in this. Like, I, I know he doesn't like wearing the makeup, but... I mean, I can make a case he was born to play this role more than <laughs> any other role that he's had. Yeah. And I I love how he oscillates between terrifying and sympathetic, where he's kind of mentoring Vic and then threatening to put him in the grave. <laughs> and that, like, I love that interplay with himself that he almost seems to have. <laughs> um, I One of my favorite scenes so far was the quasi spy craft in the mansion around the informant mm-hmm, or, mm-hmm, mm-hmm. that to me was brilliant because it was like he's playing cat and mouse setting up um the other boss to kind of take the, the other guys to take the fall for his mm-hmm. covering his tracks with the murder yeah, yeah. but it was like watching jason Bourne or james <laughs> bond like right like in this big waddling guy who's like snaking around corners and like dodging in and out of rooms and like i'm just watching this and i'm like but it's brilliant because it's completely contained it's all bad guys it's the kind of thing that batman would never pay attention to right this yeah. is the kind of action set piece that would not draw the attention of a cape crusader it's just happening behind closed doors and he's pulling the puppet strings, and now he's got the allegiance with uh, Sophia that he wanted. Yeah. That to me was a masterclass like sequence to end that episode. I thought it was mm-hmm. absolutely brilliant. I did not love the car chase. I got to be honest. That was the one scene where I was like, it's kind of a coin flip if Batman would swoop in to something like this because they left like a flaming wreck and a huge yeah. like trail from that yeah, where yeah, I was like, yeah. mm, mm. It's- I was like, he, he's got to notice. Like, the, yeah, the, the, yeah, the signal's yeah. got to be up in the air. Like, somebody's got to be letting him know there's some going down here. So that was the one scene where I kind of was like, you guys are getting a little big time with your uh, with your crime. I got to rewatch that to hope. I'm going to see if I pause any moments of the when they're looking in the sky to see. Because you never know, right? At least, like, the, the, there's, a, there's a Batman light up in the sky. Who knows? That's what I mean, though. They should, to me, they should have used that in that scene because then it would have been like, it would have increased the time urgency. Yeah. Like you remember, like in the opening scene of Heat, where they're robbed with the truck, they rob the truck, and like the second mm-hmm. they start the crime, they're like, response time is three minutes. So like yeah, you and yeah, the yeah. audience are like, oh man, these guys got to do all this before the cops get here, right? Yeah. If they yeah. put that up in the sky, and one guy looks up and you see it, you immediately know this thing's got to happen in like 60 seconds. Yeah, yeah. Boy, so I thought they missed that a little bit there. That was one. But you know where's the other missed opportunity, Brian, is the mentions of other deterrents and other barriers that happened in the first film, but yet no mention of the crazed lunatic dressed in a bat uh, outfit beating up you know, criminals in in the middle of the night, right? There's just no mention of him. And I would think that he would be a problem of of sorts. Uh, Or not not necessarily a problem, but just a mention of someone out there, right? I don't know. I I just find that a little bit like they're ignoring that aspect. They've, they've, They've acknowledged the Riddler. But none of the none of the individuals in the criminal world have mentioned them, which is weird to me. Yeah, that's fair. That's fair. They're keeping like there's definitely some obvious names they could be going to, or that they're kind of maybe. I mean, maybe they're coming. Maybe they're cautious about doing it. But that's fair. I think that's a fair critique. Yeah. Um, but no, I mean, generally, I'm I'm happy with all the performances. I love Sophia's portrayal I, I could see more Maroney anytime they want to yeah awesome and Kristen Milian is just killing it in this show <clears throat> and I would say also the her and Oz talking their dialogue is always very interesting oh yeah 
is always a very interesting conversation when they talk. Well, I can't like, wait to find out when she finds out that he off the brother. Like that, that, I can't wait for that moment. The way this is going and the way this has been set up. You got to see this next episode. I almost spoiled it for you, but you got to see okay. this next episode. So, um, but yeah, let us know what you guys think so far of the, of the Penguin. And it um, continues to be a big hit, by the way. The audience continues to grow for this uh, week to week. I'm telling so you, people are on it. Yeah, I'm telling you, this is like almost. It's prime time. The fact that they're releasing it on Sunday, on the days that, you know, if Game of Thrones is on, it would be just Game of Thrones. Or it would be Sopranos or something. This is the Penguin, you know? And everybody's showing up to watch something on Sunday night, and this is it. Let's move on to Marvel, man. Now let's get over to the fact that we keep talking about Blade, Brian, is just like, what else is there to say? Right? What else is there to say? There's no, there's no, I'm not shocked that there's no director. I'll be shocked that there is a director. Like confirm it, that he says I'm the, uh, you know, I'll be shocked. But as you said, I won't, we won't know if this film is done until we see it up on screen. So James Samuels, who you're talking about, we had had the rumor that several directors have been in to see Marvel, that he had impressed the execs and uh, he went on socials to say that was not true at all. Um, quote, I am not in talks to do Blade with Marvel. I love me the Daywalker. Cannot wait to watch that joint. <laughs> so he's not in love. And again, we're taping this show in the second week of October. They're supposed to start shooting November 1st. Nobody wants this job. You want this job? You want to go in there? Th you want to go in there with three weeks' notice with a project that's been gestating since 2019, and you got to save it? No, the person they can get to do that is not a person we want directing this. That's kind of how I'd look at, it, right? The best directors suited for this will want a clean slate, mm. and will not want the time pressure of you have to start shooting in three weeks. No, nah, nobody's taking like it's like yeah. the fact that 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 hasn't even been announced it shows how much they don't care about this, Brian. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> like they're all like we want. That's what I'm saying. Like they're like they don't want to get it right. They just want to get it done. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and I think part of it is because Mahershala's schedule, right? He just finished Jurassic World, the Jurassic Park movie. He just finished mm -hmm. shooting that. And he has a window, I'm sure, right now where he can do this. And then I'm sure he's probably got something else lined up. So if they don't film it now, then they probably can't get at it with him till later next year or sometime. But it's not worth it. No, it is not. No, not it worth is it. not. Yeah. Um, and I think, I, think, I think the plug is going to get pulled. Like, it... Part of the reason oh, they're yeah, scrambling to get the, yeah, part of the reason they're scrambling, I'm guessing, is there might be some internal of like, if you don't get this in front of the camera by this date, no more funding. Yeah. Because they spent already like, money. There's right? a rumor the other day Disney's cutting Star Wars television production down to one show a year now. And because they already have um, Ahsoka season two, uh, I forget what it even is next year. It's like they already have the next few years worth. Uh, greenlit. It basically means there's no more Star Wars shows getting made until like 2028. So yeah. the money's tight. The money's tight. And I can just wait around forever for this. Is the money tight for the superhero genre? No, I think it's I think it's tight for the I think it's tight at the corporate level. To be honest, I mean these mm -hmm. com these companies lost a ton of money on their streaming apps, right? And like now they need a lot of cash flow. Even Disney, right, which has had some struggles elsewhere, like. And we'll talk about it a little bit with uh, some of the flops they've had. Like everyone's losing money, yeah. you know. Raimi back <laughs> for another go yeah. at Doctor Strange three. This is a movie, Brian, that we've heard rumors about for some time now, Brian. Now they're saying that they have a director and Raimi is back to doing it. What are your thoughts on, on his return to this 
I don't know what to call multiverse of madness. I don't know if he looks, I don't know what the genre looks at it as a success. I think it's, it made money just based off the, the, you know, uh, successes of other films, right? Especially No Way Home and the other big films, you know, anything, anything you put out, I think makes money for you at that time. Yes. So what are you, what are your thoughts of him coming back to this? And what are you, do you have any, um, details as to what this will be about so multiverse of madness will hold an interesting place in the history of this because on the one hand it made 955 million dollars so it was profitable yeah and sam raimi stepped into a difficult situation because scott derrickson and the studio disagreed to the point where part of a movie was made yeah. and raimi had to come in we just talked about with blade right raimi kind of did a little bit of that he kind of came in picked up the pieces crafted half of a movie yeah and managed to at least get it up on screen to a level that people went and saw it but you could argue that it's also the movie where marvel slippage was really starting to become apparent because it's it's a movie that when you look when you watch it now when it comes on tv you're like how did this movie get close to a billion dollars like it, it really it's kind of what you ask i think when you watch it there's a lot more flaws than there is brilliance I'm open to it. I mean, Raimi is, he is kind of a horror guy. He is kind of a, you know, that sort of, I'm open to him having a clean sheet to give this a try. I do think you're getting, I, as we talked about, you're getting Sam Raimi with a few miles per hour off his fastball at this point in his career. Mm -hmm. But that may not be a terrible thing. My other thought, and I don't know what your reaction to this is, you notice how Marvel's stable of directors is shrinking to like the people they've on they only the people they've worked with before. Is anyone else noticing that like you're not really seeing the new blood as much, right? It's like we brought the Russos back, we're bringing Raimi back, like Cretton we thought was leaving, but actually he was getting promoted to do Spider Man. Like it's a pretty small stable of familiar names. Those days <laughs> of we get the new. The, those days of we found the Russos on TV and gave them Captain America, like yeah. that's not happening anymore with these projects. So there's a part of me that feels like whether it's the studio, whether it's just the genre fading in the eyes of agents and talent, they're kind of left with retreads. Like they're working with the same people they're used to because it's kind of all they have. Yeah. And I'm willing to take on the job. And 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 especially New Blood now trying to ruin their careers after they just get started. You know what I'm saying? A few million dollars don't go too long this, these days. You know what I'm saying? So, and again, again, this sort of work you don't do for the for the money, although it's nice. You do it for sustainability and all that, but to do it because of the craft, you know. But uh, Raymond coming back. I think the, the bigger question is you asked what, what's the movie about? So here's my number one question for you. Is Charlize co-headlining this movie or not? I don't think so. Okay. If, you, if you're trying to save money, then the answer would be no. She's not cheap. And she wouldn't expect to sell. And I don't think she wants to be a part of the Marvel Universe just to be a part of the Marvel Universe. She wants to get pizzied. Well, it felt like she did when she signed on to do the cameo, which was like a long time ago. But like, I don't know that they necessarily have to pull on that string and keep going with that, whatever that recast. was. There's going to be a recast. They should. Especially if she's going to be demand, demanding, yes, I think, demanding a certain amount of money. And we can't have that. She, Her character is not that important. She's a roadie. I'm sorry. <laughs> it's time to bring, call somebody else. So then I would say, what is the movie about? Like the purpose of Doc Strange 2 in theory was it was a mess of a movie but you can kind of see like okay it's multiverse on big screen first and foremost right introduce people to that it was scarlet witch breaks bad and then that sort of in theory we would have thought leads you to other directions down the road 
again, it wasn't so much about Stephen Strange himself necessarily. So we're left with the third eye, right? We're kind of left with that at the end. Like presumably that will be something we, we go forward with, but like, yeah. I did. I guess the question is, did we need a third strange headline movie, like, you know, to I round him out? If this movie comes out before the Secret, Secret Wars, then I guess I, I mean, because the, the second one left off as, you know, they're going off to prevent incursions, right? Right. So I would assume that this movie makes more sense before the Secret, before Secret Wars. Uh, yes, uh, I think so, it would happen. I think Secret Wars is going to get delayed again. So I feel like for sure this movie would shoot and come out before that. Yeah. So let's see. I mean, like you said, you know, giving Raimi that second, that, that clean slate to do what he, to cook. Yeah. Uh, makes sense uh, because he came in halfway to sort of save this film. Yeah. And I think the budget will be half of what the second one was. And the second one was what? I mean, the rumors were the budget for that went over $300 million. So how much, Brian? How much has Marvel lost on some of these recent bombs? Yeah, speaking of, good segue there. So we, we got some figures that made the light of day regarding the Marvels and Quantumania in particular. Did you, have you seen the number, by the way? Did you, I sent it to you. Did you see what the, the final, I think I saw it, the but... final Marvel's budget? The actual budget, when you take the film plus marketing plus kind of the extra stuff, $455 million. So, again, if that's your cost, just to put that in perspective, you must make a billion dollars to break yeah. even. Yeah. Like, that's a lost cost. That, that's a... Yeah, that's a mistake. You should never make a movie where a billion dollars is your break even. That's never a good idea. Here's the problem, Brian. When you run up, when you run the tape, and you hear Kevin Feige talking about the Marvels is going to be dope. So four fifty five, they did get some tax credits back, but the reported loss to the studio on that movie alone was two hundred and thirty seven million dollars. On a franchise where the first entry made 1.1 billion although as we said we've always said that was kind of a product of the times and the momentum to end game but still you do not green light the second captain marvel film thinking you're going to lose 237 million dollars yeah um statistically by the way that number would be disney's single greatest flop ever <laughs> ever move over john carter <laughs> which is the current current record holder. But then they had a thing there about Quantumania. So Quantumania, the loss was a little bit smaller. It was closer to like $80 million. Okay. That budget wasn't quite as high. And that had a $100 million opening weekend domestic, if you recall. What was the budget for that? I think that one was closer to like 200 or a little bit lower. Throwing marketing was closer to like three. Um, and then they, because of that opening weekend, they were able to scratch out, you know, something close to four ish like total yeah. you know they kept a little more they kept half of that and you lose 100 million a little less than 100 million but those so like those two movies alone they lost more than 300 million dollars on so if you just say like hey those movies come in the same year right so you have guardians three sandwiched between those where they did fine but they're two new entrants in a calendar year they lost an average 150 million dollars a movie And that doesn't like this analysis doesn't even include Indiana Jones, where the budget was over three hundred million dollars, and they lost two hundred million dollars on that. So when we talk about resources being scarce, they get scarce in a hurry when you start losing one hundred and fifty to two hundred million dollars a project in Star Wars, Indiana Jones, and Marvel. So this is why I say like whether it's Marvel, you know, we know Warner Brothers has cash problems, but don't underestimate that Disney's purse strings are getting tighter. And that these yeah. budgets have to go down. And the only films that are going to get the real money, the real money, are going to be Spider-Man 4 and the Avengers movies. That's it. 
I think everything yeah. else they're they're gonna start. You know, we heard Blade was gonna be less than a hundred for going forward. Like, it's gonna be like one hundred to one hundred and fifty. I think. What can you do with that for me as a filmmaker? We'll have to see how Daredevil: Born Again does as well. The, so the rumor was that budget was cut dramatically too. By the way, because there was a quote from really? the television side about Agatha, which they confirmed was a lot cheaper than anything else they had made because there's not a lot of effects in it. And then there was a comment made that they applied the same like budgetary approach to Born Again. Cap four, Brian. Speaking of budgets out of control in movies that probably are, <laughs> may not make money. Um, they've been making know. this movie for like 10 years. How long have they been making this movie? This movie's been, been, been in the works for a minute. And now we get some reports, some leaked reports, Brian. I'm not going to get into the spoilers of it, but Brian, but based on what I've read, Brian, there seems, there seems not to be a lot of chemistry with a lot of the characters here, Brian, except for a few that were mentioned. Some that would make sense or made sense in the comic books, but don't make necessarily sense here because they really didn't put them together to work together. What's that movie with Teron Egerton? Service. King, Se Kingsman. The Kingsman. Some borrowed ideas there, Brian. With no real reasoning for why they're trying to do this. Uh, in this film with the, with the leader. Brian, this sounds crazy, Brian. This sounds like like, why should I spend my money to go see this? But I'm going to go see it just to see some of the little things that you wouldn't necessarily see. Like what? The Hulk. The Red Hulk, as a matter of fact. And there's also some rumor, and this is something that Tracy, shout out to Tracy, 4994. He told me this a long time ago, and I was like, I didn't really pay too much attention to it, but he had told me that they had added Amadeus Child to this which is a version of the Hulk um, that yeah, I'm not more too familiar version. with. They're more modern yes. version. Yeah. Doesn't seem like this movie Cat 4 is going gonna, is gonna, is gonna to be another disappointment. And I don't know how much it will affect the momentum going into these other films, Brian. Because it's just, again, we're going to keep saying it. The Avengers not making a billion. I doubt it doesn't make a billion, but two billion, Brian? 1.5 billion, those big numbers, Brian? Nope. Not right With now. Movies like Cap 4 coming out? I don't know, Brian. Well, do you, you, do read, you, want, to, did you read do you want me to go through what? Did you read it? The the Reddit? Yeah. Do you want me to go through some of the high points of what's in here? Do we want to talk about it? Because my number one thing when I read this is why mm -hmm. is this movie called Captain America anything? Right? It's not a Captain America movie. If this is true, this is not a Captain America movie. This yeah. is a prelude to World War Hulk movie. Yeah. Am I wrong? I mean, that, that's what it read to me. It was like, okay, so the vehicle, the whole point of this, I'll try, I'll, you know, you guys can find it. Just Google Captain America. Yeah, Wars. yeah. Story spoilers. We don't, we don't want to spoil it for you. What I will say is thematically, the leader's pulling the strings behind everything, including the Red Hulk. Amadeus Cho is a character supposedly in this movie. And supposedly he has been given the serum already. So prepare for his version of the Hulk. And then supposedly there's some kind of credit scene that very purposefully sets the stage for World War, World War Hulk. What is that doing? in Captain America 4. Like, that's why, like, to me, that's so disrespectful to Anthony Mackie and, and the work that he's put in. And he says, you don't, you clearly don't trust him as a leader mm. because you've surrounded him with this. You wanted to put in full-on Serpent Society. You couldn't do that. You cut, audiences rejected that in the test screening. So you cut it down to supposedly Giancarlo Esposito as sort of a nod to maybe a future serpent serpent society but i mean you're you want us to think about winter soldier 
But Winter Soldier's greatness is not about what came after it. <laughs> the greatness is in the movie itself. It's in the relationships yeah. between those characters, good and bad. That movie, you can pull out of the MCU and just watch it over and over again. And you don't need the other 30 films. Yeah. Yeah, there's some Easter eggs. Yeah, it goes some, it does connect you to other things down the road. But those things came later. Yeah. If the whole point of this movie is to get to World War Hulk, I think that's really sad and a shame <laughs> for the, the best franchise within the Marvel Universe that they produced that we're going to wind up here. I'm still salty over the Planet Hulk references they made in Thor Ragnarok. Yep, I agree. Because that could have been the Incredible Hulk story right there leading to World War Hulk. But no. They want to mysteriously put this dude on 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 a jet. That flies to Scott. I don't know how they. I don't. I still don't get it, Brian. I gotta watch the movie again to understand how he got to, to that to this planet, Brian. And now we're gonna be introduced to a, a storyline that deals with World War Hulk. I don't know in what way, other because the only way that I know is of is from the the Planet Hulk uh, comic book. And now we get in this rendition that really doesn't deserve i don't i I don't know i don't know they it's like it's you're ruining it like who cares about the world war hulk right now because we're going to secret wars we're gonna what where are we going that's it where are we going that's it to me and and to me it's like winter soldier was 2014 so anthony mackie makes his marvel debut 10 years ago so you invested 10 years in this actor in this character And you made a creative decision five years ago to pull that strand of the comics and give him the shield as the heir apparent. And the only thing he's going to get to do is be a jobber for a World War Hulk movie? Like, why? I'm just saying, like, if I was Anthony Mackie, I'd be... Well, remember, we heard reports he was clashing with the director. And we heard reports he was not happy. And like when I read this, I was like, yeah, I wouldn't be happy either. I was like, either make me cap or don't. But don't put me in this position where the movie's named after my character, but I'm basically like the seventh, I'm basically lower, lower in the power rankings than I was as Falcon in Winter Soldier. That's that's what I mean. Like, if that's if you don't have the confidence in your new Captain America to actually headline Captain America, then you probably shouldn't make the movie, and you should probably wait however long, reboot, and have another Steve. If that's really how you feel, now I think Mackie's capable of more, but and clearly so did they at one point. But it doesn't seem like they feel that anymore. Because this movie is, if this movie is so jam packed with leader pulling the strings to get to World War Hulk, how is Captain America going to be Captain America in this movie? Yeah, so many things stacked up against him, man. One, he doesn't have the serum. Yeah, it's already hard enough. He's supposed to be dealing with all these situations here. You're pitting him against a Hulk head to head. Something you never asked Chris Evans to do, basically, unless he fought Thanos with Mjolnir. Like, yeah. Yeah, it's like you want this iteration of Cap to fail and then be shuffled off, which feels very sinister to me if that's the case. But, like, yeah. I'm going to say this again, Brian. The leader is going to look ridiculous, (laughs) Brian. I'm telling you, <laughs> Brazzies, get ready. You are going to have a field day with this. And and I'm just, oh, man. But but then you see, like, okay, so you're going to do that already bad. Right? So, like, look at this movie's ideas. We have Anthony Mackie as Cap. We have 
Serpent Society, no Serpent Society. We have leader Red Hulk to World War Hulk. Then if you look close, it's like, wait, so there's Anthony Mackie's Cap, there's Danny Ramirez as Falcon, and then there's Shirahas as Sabra. Hmm, what does that remind you of? Steve, <laughs> Natasha, yeah. right? And Falcon. It's yeah. so they are trying to shoehorn like a winter soldier relationship ish thing in there, but it's so muddied with this other stuff that you're like, you've got like three to four movies in this, N none of which necessarily are great, but together don't seem in any way to lead me to, you know, classic you know, sleek, critically acclaimed, you know, Marvel's got, you know, Marvel's rediscovered the formula. I don't, I'm, I'm not a believer in this movie at all. And I feel bad for Anthony Mack. I feel bad for him. I think he deserved better than this. Yeah. I'm there with you. I'm there with you. Some small tidbits before we sign off. Brian, extraction director to Helm Shinobi film? I got my attention. They're really problem. going. They're really, they're really going back and trying to dig up all this this stuff from back in the day, and do something dope with it, which is I, which I appreciate, especially with this uh, this announcement here, Brian. Because extraction was was in terms of action pack that was done really really well, and Shinobi, that's going to be very interesting. I'm think I'm looking at. I, I, it, do you remember that that movie called Assassins? It wasn't you assassins. It was not assassin. Ninja assassins. I think that this will, of... but I think this will be more serious looking than that was. That definitely had a sensational sort of over the top super slow yeah. mode. The blood was almost like <clears throat> art. Uh, yeah. I didn't hate it. I mean, like the parts of that movie, I don't hate. But like, I didn't love it either. But I, I, no. I, I, I you know, I like watching it. it. Yeah. There's mo yeah, there's moments of action where you're mm -hmm. like, oh, this is pretty interesting. But I think this, based on the extraction, grittiness slash originality of the fighting, yeah, that's what got me intrigued. Is like, mm -hmm. if they're gonna do like a serious take on Joe Mushashi trying to trying to stop whatever organization that was in, in those games, like, yeah, yeah, and this guy is gonna come up with some creative ways to show you ninja ninja action, like that. That's could yeah. work. That could be interesting. Yeah. Brian, Michael Bay is going to be the one helming this Transformers versus, well, not versus, but this crossover of Transformers and G.I. Joe. Did you hear that? He is? I That's did not hear I that. That's what I read. God, no. Michael Bay is going to be the one helming this or producing it. No, he's producing. He's going to be involved. He's going to no, yeah, be producing. He's been producing all of them. I don't think he's directing anymore Transformers movies. But uh, I mean, whatever iteration comes out of this. No. But uh, yeah, let us know. I, I, I know. What was that? Don't get me started on G.I. Joe. I've talked about this before. <laughs> yeah, yeah. This is the <laughs> ultimate. Why are you making this so hard? Yeah. Yeah. And doesn't, and doesn't, yeah, it doesn't why? have to be that hard. Yeah. They focused on the silly, they focused on the wrong things. And it's like, You've got plenty of, you've got, you know, just make it Black Hawk down with Joes and Cobras. That's it. It's real easy. Yeah. That's it. That's it's it. Just like swap the characters <laughs> and just be like, all right, well, here's Duke. Like, here's Flint. Like, here's Cobra Command. That's it. That's all you got to do. That's it. Brian, and lastly, uh, so they just casted their first, the, I think it was the lead for Voltron. Oh, yeah, the kid who we've never heard of. It's like a no, complete no name. Yeah, he was the understudy for Tom Holland. Uh, on stage, not on screen. Yes, on stage, yes. Yeah. Uh, I don't know if his name is going to be Keith, but this could work, Brian. I assume this could work. he looks like Keith. <laughs> He's got the eyes and the Yeah, hair. yeah, yeah, yeah. So um, Tom, um, Quinn, uh, Daniel Quinn Toye or Toy or Quinn to yeah. Amazon is moving forward, Brian. This is like... It, just knowing, Brian, that this is actually being made, I am there, Brian. I am there for this. 
Yeah, I just oh, hope yeah. this is not on Earth. Yeah, exactly. I mean, I wish we had a better director. I would feel if it was Del Toro instead of Thurber, I would feel a hundred times better. Yeah. But um, the one thing that struck me is he's young, so they're really going young Voltron Force. Which the one thing is, does do you think that runs the risk of you getting a little too close to Power Rangers in some people's eyes, just because the age bracket? No, I think if they go a specific route. Where they're not teenagers, I think they. I, I mean, you get you see the angle that they're going for, right? They, they, they yeah. the young kids and stuff. Young like audience, that. it's a hundred percent. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They're definitely going for that. If they do it right, Brian, this could this could be huge. Also, this says, could be huge. Yeah, it also says that I know we had fun casting big names. They're not really going for. The really expensive names and oh and no, no, no 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 <laughs> no so maybe Definitely one maybe not. there'll be one maybe low tour maybe there'll be one those really the, the, yes, yes, yes 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 but, uh, yes 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 yeah if this is if this is your Keith then that means the other people are gonna be like first or second time you've seen them on screen I would I would assume that they'll get. I just don't. I just hope they don't make this goofy, Brian. I know there's some characters that could be goofy, like Hank or Hunk or whatever his name was. Um, yeah. Uh, and they the had small the mice. guy pit. They always had the mice. They were silly. You know? Yeah. No, I'm not, I doubt they're gonna. <laughs> oh no! I bet there's a the, movie. That's like an Easter. Egg. Dude, oh, yeah. The yeah 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 the the butler dude. You know what I'm talking about? Yeah, the guy with the his collar was... up the whole time. Yeah, like, yeah. Looking after the castle. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I'm pretty sure they're going to get a big name actor. Not a big name, but somebody we know just to that, you know. Yeah. I guess uh, keep us um, watching. We talk <clears throat> about Shinobi and we talk about Voltron. And they're from the same general era of mm -hmm. our lives, right? The, mm -hmm. the, the 80s. Voltron will be another test of this 80s IP. Like, we love it. We grew up on it. We had the toys. We watched the cartoon. Has it stayed with people through the years enough? Like have the future iterations that like Netflix did, like in animated form, were those really popular? You know, has Power Rangers kind of taken all the steam out of this IP? Like, I think these are real questions, right? Because we saw, we, we've talked about it with Transformers. We're going to get it tested with Thundercats. We've seen, you know, G.I. Joe has not worked. I mean, the only... You know, the only 80s IP that's exploded recently is Barbie. And I don't know if you would count that as such. Yeah. Um, but, you know, it's all the stuff that you and I loved and grew up on, but kind of is faded for a lot of people. Like, you know, you draw the, the, the Shinobi thing is coming more from the Mario Brothers side of the world where video games have kept things relevant um, mm -hmm. for a number of years, right? Where I think the Zelda movie has a chance to be huge because Zelda mm -hmm. has remained so frontline. For so many Is games, that live action? So many, yeah, yeah. So they're not doing that. They're not doing that animated. That's going to be live action. Uh, but that director is the guy who did the most recent Planet of the Apes movie, which I thought was pretty good. Um, yeah. So I did not mind. But I'm just saying, people play Zelda, right? New Zelda game comes out, people buy it. They still play it. Everyone knows. There's the an character. audience. Yeah, that's what I mean. And like, even Shinobi, which is more of a throwback, like. Those franchises, like Sonic is a successful movie franchise because Sonic the game has continued for all these generations. So I yeah. think it's a really interesting contrast of like you, you're seeing the golden age of video game adaptations where these video games have stayed with us versus they're trying to find every last 80s franchise that we love, but kind of has been on the shelf for a long time for people. I don't that so far that hasn't really worked that well. Interesting. I was going to make one more comment before we signed off. I saw Transformers 1. What did you think? I liked it. I liked it, and I, and I agreed. I was, you had me thinking about when I was watching it, especially towards the end, how this can continue, man. How this can you continue. You want it, right? You want to see yeah. it, like, right? Yeah, yeah, it looked it, it looked really, really, really well done, and I feel really bad, like that this flop as yeah. it did, like it doesn't deserve it. But I do think it's like franchise contamination. 
Like I think if I could somehow erase, like if I could erase Rise of the Beast, Last Night, <laughs> Age of Ex if I could erase everything back except for Bumblebee and Transformers 1, like, uh, sorry, Transformers, the first one, not Transformers 1, but yeah, yeah, Transformers yeah, yeah, yeah. Michael Bay in 2007. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If I could just have those two movies and then this, I feel like this would be more of a hit. But I think people are like, just kind of like transformed out of that, yeah, 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 yeah. right? They just didn't give it a chance. Yeah. And they waited for just... Wild Robot, and Wild Robot's great, and Wild Robot's doing very well, and they, they, they made their choice with their dollars for that. Yeah. And they got to save up for Moana and they got to save up for Mufasa. A lot of stuff for kids this fall. So it just, but I, I like it. My, my, my kid was asking, my kid was asking me the other day, when is this going to be on streaming? I want to watch it again. Wow. Me too. Actually. Me too. I, it really looked good. I was like, wow, this looks really like, like you said, tactile, like really done yeah. well, the transformation the sound wave. You, you saw all of them. You, it, 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 yeah. It's, 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 it's a shame. It's a shame that but you knew them all. But see, that's the thing. Like, I just don't think there's a lot of kids and people today who who have that, like, who have that association, right? Like, they show yeah. you like Real Jack in the background, like you and I, like, oh, that's Real Jack. Like, but like nobody, like, no, like, see, oh, that's Prowl, that's Blue Streak. Like, but like, if you didn't grow up with it, you don't, you don't have that. Now, interestingly, like, what I mean, it's all small sample size. One of my kids' classmates and friends went to see it. She had never seen anything Transformers before in her life. And she loved it. I thought that was interesting. It was one person, but like, so she connected with the movie without any of that. Um, but I just don't think a lot of people gave it a chance. They should have uh, re-released the original Transformers movie. That's still In traumatic, theaters, but... man. I like, I, I have a tough time rewatching that. I seriously like <laughs> when Prime goes into his like final charge. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm like, yeah. that's a, that's like a, that's, that's a, a yeah, 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 I remember. <laughs> Yeah, I remember. I don't think Transformers was the, ever the same after he died. Yeah. No, no. Transformers was never. I think that's when it changed for me, man. That's it. That was the moment. Like when when <clears throat> when he has Megatron down and out, and then he allows him to like slash his flank, and he dies. Like that's it. That's the end. But that whole sequence yeah. where like in twenty five minutes they they lay waste to like the entire line of toys. Like yeah. all these characters die within like twenty minutes. <laughs> Like, think about that as if you were like, you know, it came out in 1986. Think about if you went to see that and you were seven, right? And you're like, these yeah. are my favorite toys, my favorite characters. They've been through like how many episodes and then they're all dead within 20 minutes. I was nine years old. Right? Like that's, yeah. But yeah, let us know in the conversation below what you guys think of uh, all the Marvel news that's just come out. This Blade, you know, Blade needs to be be done. Uh, hopefully that's done soon. Uh, a lot of uh, disappointing news, when, especially when you read some of the, the leaks for Captain America 4 and what this movie is really about, really. And it's just, you know, too bad. Raimi coming back for Doctor, Doctor Strange 3. What will this movie do for, uh, most likely, what? This movie is going to set up uh, Secret Wars. So, but uh, having Raimi back is going to be interesting to see what he does with a film that he didn't have full control over the first time. Um, and how Marvel is sort of rethinking its maneuvering with, re with regards to projects for Disney Plus shows. Something has to be done because they can't keep losing money like this. It it, it it just Brian, somebody's head has to roll soon, Brian. Especially after Cap Four. After Cap Four, Brian, I'm gonna be on the lookout for some names going down. Parliament names. This cannot continue, huh? Parliament names, right? It's not going to be Kevin, but I mean, Parliament names, right? That's going to be the who There you will be play. names, though. There will be names. Yeah, That's going to be very interesting to see that, uh, how that unfolds. But let us know in the comments section below what you guys think of all this, and we'll see you next time on the Nerd Gym Report. The show goes on! Yeah!